Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Masu Pro Wrestling. I'm your host and sole commentator, Masu Pro Wrestling Ton. And tonight, we're going to start off with the match that we actually should have had on Saturday for the Ultimate Open Weight Championship Tournament. It is Rize, the self proclaimed Panda Argon, Archon herself, going one on one in Open Weight Rules against Rocky. They were supposed to have they were scheduled to have this match last week, but the bosses upstairs thought that having Rocky do triple duty was a little bit unfair. We could deal with double duty, but being in the the open weight tournament, being in the idol division championship match, and the 30 participant battle royal just would have been it would have just been too much. So we're gonna have Rize. Versus Rocky. Falls count anywhere. Anything goes. For a shot. At winning the ultimate open weight tournament and an open weight title shot. Rize. Rize beat Glitchy, the current Idol Division champion, to get to this point. And Rocky beat Gareth Unpardon to get to this point. The former Idol Division champion, Rocky, making her entrance is very feels very weird to say former Idol Division champion, Rocky, because she has been the Idol Division champion for so long. But Glitchy pulled out the, all the stops and became the thir a third-time Idol Division champion. It seems the new Glitchy is just as, if not even more dangerous than the old one, and Rocky was not prepared for it. How will this affect Rocky's mental capacity going into the, uh, going into this match? I can't imagine someone like Rocky having doubts in herself. You know, I don't really know if they feel that kind of way, but if they do, the doubts might be creeping in now. And if I was Rize, I would feel very, very uncertain about what is about to happen. former idol division champion one of the longest and most dominant idol division champions going one on one was a former open weight champion Rize hasn't had any of those Rize hasn't had an open weight championship hasn't had an idol division championship can Rize make it there Rize was in the first open weight championship match but was not the champion and Rocky immediately straight out the gate with the choke slam to Rize, the self-proclaimed Panda Archon herself, or so she says. That's what self-proclaimed means. I would never, I never would count out Rize. You know, Rize always puts on good matches. She just doesn't ever quite get those big wins. And we just, we just came off of MPW Presents Last Call, but... I mean, there's still a shot for all these idols to get an idol division championship match or an openweight championship match. So the last call hasn't quite been made for the idol division. Though the icons are uh, are kind of where they're at. Merlin GTB beat tw or outlasted 29 other wrestlers to win the 30 participant battle royal and will be the number one contender for Bonk's icon division championship. We've never had a month where we've known exactly who will face and main event the next PLE, but this is the month we have. Rize backing up. Scouting her prey. Drops under. Jumps over. Tilt a whirl neckbreaker by Rize. Some people don't know this, but pandas are quite the fierce hunters. As Rize takes down Rocky. I mean, not only would this cement Rize's spot 
in the semifinals. But it would also be an incredible victory for her. Being a former Idol Division champion would be an incredible achievement and definitely bump her up the ranks in the eyes of the bosses upstairs. But I would not count out Rocky. Rocky is incredibly dangerous. If I was Rize, I would be focusing fully here, making sure to not make any mistakes. Two count. Get out two. DDT. And they make it to the outside. You might have forgotten as we went in, but this is open weight rules, means falls count anywhere. Anything goes, meaning you can use any kind of weapons or foreign objects to achieve victory. And you can pin or submit your opponent on the outside of the ring. Knee ducks the ducks the knee, does Rocky, and chops and slaps, lighting up the red panda's already semi-red face. Rocky, or Rocky gets taken down by Rize. Rize trying to just go for tit for tat with Rocky here. Rize in the corner using the ropes. Usually this would be up to referee's call if that's a legal move, but in this match, anything goes. Chop to Rize's chest. Kick out at one, though. Rocky's trying to put away Rize very early, and Rize is not having it. I don't know if this is hubris or if she truly believes that Rize is already out. Because I would not count out Rize. It's a very dangerous thing to do as Rize immediately catches, catches the fall for Rocky, putting Rocky into a submission hold. We could see Rocky tap. She's going to fight out of it, though. But like I said, any opportunity you give Rize... She's going to take it, and that is going to be your downfall if you don't think that Rize can handle it. Jumps over. Bumps him. Off the ropes. Back elbow. Getting Rize over the top rope. If only Rocky could have done that to the bear in the 30-person battle royal, but... Luckily for us, Merlin did. I mean, I don't... I, I had conversations with the bosses upstairs over email. They still use a Yahoo. Or, the, well, they, they use a Yahoo email. That's not important to the story. Um, cover! <laughs> Kick out of one. But they don't know who Greg or the bear are, so... Um, I don't know what's going on, but... Very busted Holmes was a was a favor, I guess. He he might not show up again either, but that was nice to see the grandson of such a legend. Rize with these upper cuts and takes Rocky down to the floor. Dragon screw leg whip from the wandering dragon. Back handspring. And again, the knees into the back handspring knees. Making all the air come out of the chest, but immediately going for the fingies. And now trying to choke out Rize. Doing whatever it takes to win this match. I mean, this is for an openweight championship title opportunity. Ooh, spear by Rize. Like I said earlier, don't give Rize an inch. She'll take a mile spear by Reze, nearly moving to the semifinals. Reze versus Rocky. Rocky, though, now lost and found on the outside to Reze. Could put her away for the semifinals? No. Neither a spear or a lost and found could do it. Rocky still in control. It's anybody's game here. Choke slam to the floor. Ooh, hitting maybe the elbow on the stairs. Those solid steel stairs. 
big boot into the corner from the or into the barricade. Like a bro kick. With those sandals on. Those are deadly. Those are solid wood sandals. Speaking of deadly. DDT onto the floor. And a knee strike. If Rize or Rocky can pick up the win, they will be facing B.A. Tycho in the semifinals. And then that person winning that match will face Blueness in the finals. So they got a long way to go. B.A. Tycho is going to be a dangerous opponent to face. He has been putting, off, putting on many matches and just dominating his opponents. So can Rocky or Rize beat B.A. Tycho to get to the finals? First, they got to make it past this match. The slaps, the ringing in the ear that Rizzi must feel after those slaps cause you to lose your orientation, discombobulate you. Rocky off the ropes and a pig boot clips the side of the jaw. Rocky with those knee strikes. Looking to flip Rize all the way around. Contorting Rize like a puppet. Playing with the strings. Elbow drop from the top by Rocky. One, two, kick out of two. Rocky thought she had it. Not quite, says Rize. But I think... Rize might have lost something with that last move. And with this, it's going to be lost and found. No! Rize reverses it. That could have been it for Rize. Doesn't quite get all of it with that drop kick. Russian leg sweep. Rize barely keeping herself alive. Swinging full 180. And Rocky going back up, maybe for another elbow drop, maybe dropping the knees. Elbow drop to the spine. There is no rope breaks in an open weight match. Two, kick out again at two, and Rocky is fuming. There's been no weapons used in this match. These two have just taken it to each other the old-fashioned way. And trying to choke out Rize in the corner. I mean, I think Rocky's getting fed up. Rocky wants to end this match as quick as possible. Maybe a third time's the charm for this elbow drop. No, a leg drop. Missed it. Rize hooks the arm for that inverted DDT. And Rocky is looking in trouble here. Caught completely off guard by Rize. Can Rize move to the finals? Or, or semifinals? Or will it be Rocky? It is truly still anyone's match here. Rize back and up in a spear right as I say that. The, the chances might have been dashed for the former Idol Division champion. No! Kick out at two. Reze though keeping the momentum shifted in her in her side. Maybe looking for a weapon now. Maybe that is what can put away Rocky. Playing a little bit of cat and mouse. Getting back into the ring. Waiting for Rocky to get in. Ooh, thinks against it. Throws the bat down. Maybe that was a good idea. I don't know. Bumps him. And a crucifix driver. Rize thinks against using the steel bat. An interesting uh, show of mercy from Rize. Or, or maybe it was just a momentary lapse of judgment as Rize grabs the bat. Once again, two swings and a miss, but there she hits her mark. Ooh, Rocky getting stuck in the corner. Rize... Looking to fly, hand of God. Looking to put away the former Idol Division champion, Spear. Two, 
Three and Rize is moving to the semifinals. We will see Rize next week facing B.A. Tycho in the semifinals. Last call was on Saturday, but Rize still has another chance for the Openweight Championship and maybe an Idol Division Championship in her future as well. There could be one more shot for Rize to pick up this win as we'll move on to our next match of the night. It is time for our second match of the evening. And no matter how you felt about Rize winning that match, today is going to be a good day because Minty Clovers is going to be here. And today is a good day for Minty Clovers because an idol didn't win that 30 participant royal or battle royal. So we are in no man's land for the Idol Division. Who will challenge Glitchy for the Idol Division Championship? I mean, Rize just beat the former Idol Division Champion. Can Minty pick up a win and solidify her spot potentially in a number one contendership match? I mean, I know Minty would love to get her hands again on Glitchy and pick up a, another championship win. Former champion in her own right. But there are a lot of new blood since Minty had the championship. There's a lot of new blood pining for that championship. And of course, they're the returning vets of the industry. The first ever Idol Division champion dancing with Draven and the, the, the runner-up in the Battle Royal. Number 30 herself dancing with Draven. Dancing with Draven, making her way to the ring, and she hasn't had a title shot in a while, it feels. Maybe looking to get her hands on Glitchy. Prove to everyone she can still hack it. I think this would be a pivotal match in both of these two careers. Both of these two's careers. When we're while we're wrapping up the season, because we only have like five weeks left in the season. We're almost at the end of MPW Season 1. Who will exit this season being the champion? You definitely don't want to be the runner-up. Dancing with Draven versus Minty Clovers is a match. Is a match that should be in a, in a premium live event that we're giving away on free television, honestly. These two are some of the top performers in the industry. Win records be damned. These two are incredible. And we will see if they can pick it up. I mean, there are so many incredible idols in this division that it is, it is, it's, it's so hard to pick who will be the number one contender. Luthez Press coming out the gate for Minty Clovers. I do not envy the, envy the bosses upstairs having to pick the number one contender, Frankensteiner from Minty. But I feel like both of these two have been pining for the championship and haven't had a title reign in a while. You definitely want to be known as the person that ended the season with the championship and not the person that lost right at the end, right at the finish line. Who will win this marathon? Minty Clovers or Dancing with Draven here tonight? Who will challenge Glitchy for the Idol Division Championship? So far, it's been a clean back and forth. Minty Clovers had an opportunity in the Ultimate Openweight Championship Tournament, but lost in the first round against Blueness, who has actually made it all the way to the finals. An incredible showing for Blueness, seeing that she has, or they have, not really had an opportunity at a title shot. Maybe Blueness could be the Idol Division number one contender as Draven rolls up. Minty gets the shoulders. This is a singles normal match, by the way. That means all the regular rules apply. Countouts, rope breaks, disqualifications. There's a lot of that stuff.
Draven trying to get some momentum, thinking against it. Maybe that doubt is what's getting her, uh, is, is failing her at the moment. We saw a little bit of doubt in Draven there. That killer instinct is what is crucial in this business, to know exactly what you're doing and being confident in your abilities. And Minty Clovers is exuding confidence, confidence right now and competence. As she climbs up to the top rope. Ooh, oh, miscalculation by Minty, though. Speaking about comp confidence, maybe overconfidence as Minty just gets tossed by the ears by Draven. Minty Clover's crawling into the corner. Has to fight out of it. Drop kick. These two are some of the most decorated idols in the division. Minty Clover's went from a like a 12 and 0 or 0 and 12 loss streak to one of the longest reigning idol division champions and a blue thunder bomb reversal. And Draven with that elevated suplex. Look at the toes. Look at the toes. Barely holding on does Minty. That elevated German beautifully done by by Draven. Nobody quite does it that well in the idle division. There could be an argument for the, the prettiest German suplex in the business is Draven, but I would say the most effective has to be Potato. Draven's known for her triple German suplexes. She's got to use three to take her opponents down. And Minty bouncing out of the corner. Neither of these two can hit a big move. They have them scouted. They know each other so well. They've been in this business for since the beginning. These are two MPW vets. Cross arm breaker, or arm bar rather. To Minty, wearing down the arm of Minty Clovers. Could she tap out right here? She's going to roll through. Reverse the, the pull on that and get out of there. Both these two know each other so well that it's kind of hard to... To be able to hit your big moves that will really take someone out because they have it scouted at every step of the way. Off the ropes sends Minty. Drops down. Jumps over. Jumps over again. And Minty catches herself on the ropes. Cro That's a cross arm breaker. Minty Clover saying, I can do this too. Looking to submit Draven. We can see a tap out. These two have something to prove. And a just got right to the chest. Dropping the foot right to the chest. Minty Clover's grabbing onto the ropes. Expertly done. Barely reaching to the ropes. And of course, rope break. Break it up. You're in the ropes. And an Enzigiri. Clipping Draven. I said the killer instinct is missing on Draven. I just think that that she's a lot less aggressive than she used to be. I mean, maybe this it comes with age, maybe it comes with uh, with beauty, but Draven, I feel like, has become less a less aggressive variant of herself. DDT, and maybe that's cost her some uh, some potential opportunities. Maybe that's cost. That's the reason she hasn't had many title opportunities. But also, I say this, but the brutality never ends with Draven. Drop kick! Oh my god! Draven bouncing back and head first onto the ground. The worst. Oh my god! Lights out by Minty. The blackout kick by Minty to Draven. Draven used to do that all the time, and Minty saying, hey, remember this one? Using it against her. But oh my god, Draven with that miscalculation allowing Minty Clovers to take this opportunity. To do as much damage on the outside. We are at a six count. They need to get in before the count of ten. At the count of seven. Minty Clovers barely makes it back in before seven. Off the ropes. Pop up. And just sends Draven to the floor. Could that have been it? It looks like Minty is being tired. That was a slow pull. But 
I mean, maybe both of them are feeling the effects. In the corner, Minty, ooh, went for the knee, countered by Draven. And now again, I talked about the triple German suplexes that Draven loves to do, and she's about to finish them right onto Minty Clover's rolling. Minty Clover's over. One, two, three, no, 3.9. For dancing with Draven, I mean, big boy sent on. Minty Clovers is in trouble. Because there's only one thing you're going to hear before the bell rings. When Draven is done with you, and that's the sound of night. Big boy sent on again. Putting her whole weight onto the body of Minty and... Like I said, sound of night. Plants it. Count it, ref. One, two, no. A solid two count by Minty. I still stand by the fact that Minty Clovers is one of the hardest idols to pin in the division. Out of anyone, I think Minty Clovers is the hardest wrestler to put down for the three count. Draven going up top again. Last time it wasn't a wise choice. Can she do it again this time? She nails it. Elbow drop that time. Nobody was home. Mitty Clovers goes for a clothesline. Ducks it. Draven going to meet Minty on the outside. This is only the second match of the night. Tossing Draven into the corner. Standing shooting star or running shooting star press. Beautifully executed by Minty Clovers. As they're at, towards the bottom of the French King commentator's booth. Oh, oh my god! Olympic slam! And now Minty being a little cocky, fired up, maybe. At the five count, six. They got four more seconds to get in. Referee's not playing. The stare down seven throws. Ooh, oh my god, they gotta get in. This could be a double count out. Minty makes it back in. Draven makes it back in. The ref said, okay, I see you're trying to get in. I'm gonna give you this opportunity to get in. Referee's discretion as always. Off the ropes, Minty Clovers looking for a clover cutter. Connects. Clover cutter to put away Draven. One, two. Oh, and that was a close one for Draven. Minty Clover's nearly taking it. Drop kick. Big boy sent on. The damage to the ribs. Continuing the punishment to the ribs. Draven is looking to finally put this one to rest. Sound of night on the button. This is why Dancing with Draven was the first ever Idol Division Champion and a two-time Idol Division Champion. She is ruthless. And maybe what I said about her was all wrong. Dancing with Draven picks up the win. Are you watching bosses upstairs? Are you watching people in chat? Dancing with Draven is looking for one more shot at the Idol Division Championship. As we're going to move on to our semi-main event of the evening. It is time for the semi-main event of the evening. And we're going to continue with one-on-one -on -one contest. This time it's the Icon Division. It is Unchained Awesome. Coming down all alone this time. No Angel with him. We'll have to see how that works out for him in the long run. Maybe they're... Maybe their group is already disbanded, but Unchained Awesome has had this new cocky attitude that he's always kind of had, but he's he's less polite about it, I guess. <laughs> Unchained Awesome here to put more number one contender or a one-on-one -on -one contest was eliminated by a bear, I think, in the battle royal.
And speaking of being eliminated by a bear, it is Gareth Unpardon. This is the Bears Anonymous group. Gareth Unpardon. Neither of these two are able to challenge for the Icon Division Championship because this man, this man's partner right here, Merlin GTB, the partner of Gareth, is the number one contender. He won that whole battle royal. And Gareth is coming out alone as well with his sword, Cali. They left the entourage at home. It's Gareth. And Unchained Awesome. What will these two get to do for the last couple weeks? They maybe could get an open weight championship title opportunity. But uh, they're running out of time. These two, these two, the last call was already made and Unfortunately for them, there's not much left. I mean, for Gareth, he's got a lot left. He's got to help out Merlin win that title back from Bonk, but... It's Unchained versus Gareth on Pardon. Oh my god, colliding in the air, but Gareth wins that one. Gareth on pardon with the knee strike. These two have grown so much over the years. Gareth has become one of the top wrestlers in MPW. Unchained was this one of the first, not the first, I think it was like the third. He's a former Icon Division champion. Gareth is a former Icon Division champion. These two's careers have been very similar in what they've accomplished. Merlin and Unchained used to be friends and rivals, and now they're just enemies, it seems. And Gareth has definitely put the wedge between them, those two. I think Merlin and, and, and Unchained haven't been too, too friendly ever since, and Unchained definitely doesn't take too kindly to Gareth, but I, I don't really take too kindly to either of these guys, to be honest. Neckbreaker from the middle rope. This is a, no a normal singles match. As far as I'm aware, yes. <laughs> referee's taking it slow, as I say. Referee's discretion as always. But they have to the 10 count to get back into the ring, and Gareth is fully aware of that, as he is in complete control here for this match. Jumping over the top rope. Unchained playing the defensive, but it's not working out for him. As Gareth backflips into a German suplex, that athleticism of Gareth Unpardon that's got him this far. Chain trying to keep some space. Super kick by Unchained Awesome. Half and half. No, neckbreaker. Flinged him up for the neckbreaker onto the floor. Three count. And spinning onto the knee. Directly onto the knee. Throwing Gareth under the ropes into the ring. Off the ropes and oh, Bulldog. Springboard Bulldog. Super kick blocked by Gareth this time. And now Gareth's going to bring Chain to the ropes. Gareth and Unchained didn't have a lot of opportunities to show off their skills in the Battle Royale. And Gareth. Showing off his skills, Hurricane Rana through the middle ropes. Incredibly impressive. Knee strike to the fist. And throws Unchained into the ring. Gareth feeling confident. Three count makes it back in. Fisherman suplex doesn't hook the leg or doesn't hold it sends chain into the corner it's been Gareth since opening bell nearly but chain oh just missing the ram horns to the gut 
I mean, commentators curse the moment I say that it's been all, all Gareth. Chain starts getting some offense. And now Chain off the ropes. Whew! A sharp kick to the face of Gareth. This is becoming personal between these two. No longer is this just about winning or losing. This has become a grudge match. A statement is trying to be made by Unchained, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to make it, including injuring Gareth on pardon. And he takes him down for that cartwheel into the basement. Lariat, they call him the king of the clothesline. And that just might be why. Covers Gareth. Nearly taking Gareth out after all this offense that Gareth's been putting on him. Sweeps the leg. Off the ropes looking for a head scissor. Connects with it. And finishes it. We saw a lot of amazing things on Saturday, including a bear, some guy named Greg, and a, a dude in a maid outfit, a, a legend's grandson in a maid outfit, and a man named Greg, but nothing can prepare me for this match as once again Gareth goes for it in the corner, and again Unchained misses the ram horns to the gut. Off the rope, pops him up, sends him, lets gravity do the job. Gareth, ooh, fakes out on chain in front of the French Canadian commentators. Is now taking a breather on the outside. Ref giving him some time. Chain going to step outside, break the count, set it back to one. One count. Or set it back to zero, rather. Muay Thai clinch with the knee strikes. Spinning kick. Two count. Gareth gets back in the ring because that's the only way you can win by pinfall or submission. And Gareth, ooh, trying to be, get some cocky, has a little cocky attitude, trying to taunt to the crowd, but Chain catches him. Skywalker, though, immediately getting that momentum back is Gareth. And then again, commentators cursed, shifting, and then again, commentators cursed, shifting momentum. Soccer kicks to the skull of Chain. Floats over, gets back up into a Pele kick, and sending Chain across the ring with that one. And it looks like Gareth might be going full brown crown onto him. The king has spoken oh, and wanted to make Unchain his throne there, but Chain kicks out at two. DDT. Chain goes for the cover. Could that put away Gareth? I doubt it. Yes, I do. <laughs> you never want to say you doubt it and then make uh, make the wrestlers feel upset after they lose to a move that you didn't expect them to lose to. And then you get jumped in the parking lot and they turn it into a story. Okay, knee strike. Bloodies. Gareth on pardon and now chains going up. Could we see a flying sheepdog headbutt from this distance? We will! Oh my god! Completely perpendicular. Landing the entire body on a Gareth, but still that's not enough. Bloodied and bruised. Gareth kicks out. Stomping a hole through Gareth's chest is unchained. Just stepping on the back in the ribs. Working over his whole body. Grabbing his phalanges. His fingies and just driving the two knees into the back. Chain going back up. Could he be trying to end it with another one? Ooh, he missed it on that one. Drop kick doesn't take Chain down. Gets behind Gareth. Ooh, just kicks him. Picks him up and kicks him. Trying to open up that cut on Gareth's face some more. Into the, off the ropes. Ooh, drop kick, backflip, super kick. Oh my lord. <laughs> One, 
two, three, and Unchained takes out. Oh my god, it's Flare Zero! Flare Zero is attacking Chain after the match. What is Flare thinking? And they're lowering a steel cage from the roof. Flair making the celebration. Cutting the celebration early, but Chain fending off Flair. They are now in a steel cage. Sending Flair, the, the plan working against him. Oh my god. Flair trying to make a statement, but it blew up in his face as Unchained comes out on top in both the match and that interaction. We're gonna have to lift this cage, let these two out, and get ready for the main event. All right, it is time for your main event of the evening. The newest idol that is currently signed, or the newest icon that is currently signed to MPW making his entrance, Zara Taro. Didn't have much luck in the Battle Royal, but is here to have a match tonight and prove that he's still got the stuff. Maybe an Openweight Championship match in his future. We'll have to see. But it's Zara Taro coming in at the tail end of the season. There's not much left for him, but he's been doing nothing but impressive stuff. Zara Taro going to be main eventing tonight's episode of MPW and who will be his opponent tonight. I see a lot of bright things in this guy's future. Zara Taro. I mean, if Zara Taro can impress, maybe he can earn himself a, an Openweight Championship title shot, but... Or maybe he'll be randomly selected, but that's basically it for the uh, icons. They have, they have one avenue to go down, and I mean, Flair trying to make a statement at the end of the season, targeting Chain, pulling down the steel, the steel cage. I don't know what that was about, but we'll have to figure that out later. But the current icon division champion. It is the Super Nain himself, Bonk, from a whole other galaxy. Sent here to fight Earth's champions, and he has become the champion of MPW's Icon Division. It is Bonk. An incredibly powerful member, one of the most dominant openweight champions. He could go all the way with the Icon Division Championship. He could certainly go all the way at the end of the season. He's got one title opportunity, as we know of right now, for the boss upstairs. He's got one title opportunity to defend, and he could leave the season the Icon Division World Champion. It is Bonk. Bonk's number one contender beat the Battle Royal, and that was Merlin GTB. Bonk beat Merlin GTB in a singles match. Defied the odds, and then Merlin defied the odds again and won the Battle Royal to become the number one contender for the Icon Division Championship. Merlin's going to want that championship back no matter what. The Icon Division champion Bonk will be facing Zara Taro in one-on-one -on -one contest. But if Zara Taro can pick up a win against the Icon Division champion, maybe that constitutes a potential title opportunity in some way or some shape or form, whether that be an Openweight Championship title opportunity or an Icon Division Championship opportunity. It would definitely put in question the reign of Bonk if Zara Taro can pick up a win. Probably the youngest in in terms of career length Grand Slam champion in MPW history. He is two for two for first 
uh, for title acquisitions. When he beat Glitchy for the Openweight Championship, it was his first ever match. His first ever Openweight Championship opportunity. He took it and won. And when he had an opportunity against Merlin for the Icon Division Championship, he won that. First time for the Icon Division Champion. Bonk, and he took it. Can Zara Taro pick up the win? Or will it be nothing but Bonk? Zara Taro versus the Super Nayan Bonk. And we thought a bear was weird. Oh my god, coming out of the gates with a clothesline. Zarataro off the ropes. Oh my lord. I don't even know what you'd call that. That was beautifully done by Zarataro. Pulling out moves we've never seen. Oh my god, but the pure strength of Bonk is truly unmatched. I would like to see. Maybe I would have liked to see Bonk versus a bear to prove who's the most powerful a horse or a bear. Well, right now, the hamster is fighting the Goliath, known as Bonk, trying to go off the ropes, but electric chair position drops him for that spinning discus forearm to the back of the skull. Elbow drop, getting fancy with it. This is a normal singles competition, so there are countouts, and Bonk is just lighting Zarataro up. Fisherman. Ooh, Northern Lights reversal. Clipping Bonk's legs. Clipping his heels on the apron. Three count. Jumps over the ropes. Bonk gonna use the ropes to his advantage and just hangs our Atar to dry. No! Ooh, uses it. As a mechanism to bounce Zarataro off into that suplex. Giving that suplex a little bit of extra oomph. Kick out of two. Nearly taking out the newest Icon Division member. Zarataro won't go down that easy. I mean, for a hamster, he's got a pretty large size on him. And muscles to boot. Kick out of one, though. You're not going to put away the Icon Division champion away that easily. Sends Bonk into the corner. Zarataro, step up, Hurricane Rana, into a moonsault. This is high-flying speed athleticism versus raw power, the classic matchup, as he's going to collide cannonballing over the top to Bonk. But in the face, standing shooting star, or moonsault, excuse me, Two count. Bonk reverses. Inverted. DDT. Shout out to Sting. He recently retired. That will date this, but shout out to Sting. We love him. Four count. And he's going again. <laughs> this time, didn't quite get all of it. Kip up. Drop kick swatted by... The Icon Division champion, DDT. And Bonk in the ring with Zarataro. Back and forth. It could take one or two very strong moves. Ooh, Zarataro with the gut punch. Sucker punching him off the ropes. Cross body by Zarataro. Hooks the leg. It could take one big move, as I said, to put away your opponent. Kick out of two. Zarataro going up top. Could we see a ham, ham? Thank you, ma'am. No. Rolled out of the way is Bonk. Turning him around, picking him up, and just German suplexing him. I mean, we're talking about some of the best German suplexes in the business. I'm going to say that Bonks is dirty but effective. Just tossing the hamster. Ooh, getting a little bit of sauce on him. Get that combo. Boom! 
Boom! Oh, Clash broken! Zarataro! Can you kill her? Zarataro can put the Icon Division champion to rest! Oh my god! 2.99999 repeating! Get your get your rulers out, because I think that hand was centimeters away from going down to the canvas. Zarataro nearly just pinned the Icon Division champion. He may be a hamster, but he might weasel him wet his way into an Icon Division championship match. Bonk, though, trying to pick up the broken pieces, blocks. German suplex floats over into a into a bridge pin. Two kick out of two, nearly taking Zarataro out completely. Spinning neck breaker. Kip up. Elbow drop. Bonk back up to his feet. Can Bonk get some big moves off to put Zarataro away, or will Zarataro clean up? Targeting the hands of Zarataro. Targeting those fingies. There are so many nerve endings in your fingers. This is this is just pure pain that Bonk is applying to Zarataro here. Again. He might be looking to break Zarataro's fingers. Bonk going to the second rope. Dropping the knee, but a little bit a little bit too too far for him. Ooh. Putting a boot through his chest. Clothesline again, trying to pick up some speed, some momentum, feeding off the energy of the MPW audience is Bonk. Gonna roll up Zarataro after that one. Referee out of position, making sure both shoulders are down. Kick out. Bonk is looking to end it, though. Smelling blood in the water. Beam clash broken again. Bonk. Oh, my God. Sending Zarataro into orbit. I think that might have just pissed off Bonk. There he goes. The beam clash connecting. Two. No, Zarataro kicks out, and Bonk can't believe it. Bonk just threw everything at Zarataro. Bonk looking, though, to fly through the middle rope. Right in front of the French-Canadian commentator's booth. Four count. Zarataro gonna make his way back into the ring. Bonk thinking about his next move. Zarataro says, get on in here. And Zarataro's not gonna wait. Bonk was taking a breather on the outside, thinking about his next move, but Zarataro not giving him the luxury to think. And I think that's an expert strategy. You don't want to give your opponent a chance to re recompile themselves. Zara Taro taking it to Bonk on the outside with a flurry of kicks. Going in between the ropes. Zara Taro. Kaiju. Killer, the second one of the match, could put the Icon Division champion out to pasture. Two, three, and Zarataro just pinned the Icon Division champion. Whether or not that leads to a championship match in the future, I think that puts Zarataro on the map for sure for this season or next season. Zarataro has just pinned the champion in our main event here tonight. As we'll move on to our next week. That was the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.